Hi, I'm Rebecca Starr. And I'm Erica Gardner. We're standing outside the mouth of prestigious singer Daisy Higgins, reporting live for LPP News. Today, we're doing a special field report, and we're about to dive deep inside the throat of Miss Higgins to explore the geometry of the vocal folds. So put up your hood, and let's get going. <laughs> That was quite a ride. Well, the topic we're going to be focusing on today is what makes the pitches of people's voices different. But first, let us explain what the vocal folds are. The vocal folds are a pair of vocal ligaments and muscles stretched across the larynx. They are covered by a mucous membrane. Along with the lungs and articulators, they produce the human voice. Our topic also requires an understanding of frequency. Frequency determines the pitch of the voice. The greater the frequency, the higher the pitch. When discussing the vocal folds, fundamental frequency refers to the number of times the vocal folds open and close per second. One set of opening and closing makes a single cycle. Thus, the fundamental frequency can be represented by the equation f naught equals cycles per second, where f naught is a fundamental frequency in hertz. To understand how the fundamental frequency determines the pitch of the human voice, you first need to understand how the voice is produced. When a person exhales to produce sound, air pressure builds up beneath the closed vocal folds. When that pressure becomes too great, the air bursts through, forcing the vocal folds open. Because of their elasticity, the vocal folds quickly snap back together, and once again air pressure builds up beneath them. This cycle repeats over and over again, hundreds of times per second, causing the vocal folds to vibrate. The distance between the vocal folds throughout these cycles is known as the amplitude of vibration. The amplitude of vibration can be graphed to produce a sine wave, which expresses the distance between the vocal folds at a given time. The amplitude of vibration does not actually affect the pitch, but a graph of the change in the amplitude of vibration of the vocal folds is a good way to show the speed of the vocal fold vibrations and how they relate to the fundamental frequency. Take a look at these two graphs. The graph on the left shows a change in amplitude of vibration for the average woman. The graph on the right shows a change in amplitude of vibration for the average man. As you know, the pitch of a woman's voice tends to be higher than that of a man. These graphs show that the higher the fundamental frequency is, the faster the vocal fold cycle is. Therefore, the faster the vocal folds vibrate, the higher the pitch of the voice will be. But what makes vocal folds vibrate faster? Let's take a look at some of the laryngeal variables that affect pitch. The pitch of the human voice is in an inverse relationship with the length of the vocal folds. As the length of the vocal folds increases, the pitch decreases because longer vocal folds do not vibrate as quickly as shorter ones. The average man has longer vocal folds than the average woman, which accounts for the differences in the pitches of their voices. This graph illustrates the inverse relationship showing that as length increases, pitch decreases. When looking at a single individual, the pitch of their voices is also affected by the tension of their vocal folds. Muscles in the larynx stretch the vocal folds, causing them to become tenser. As this tension increases, the vocal folds vibrate more rapidly, raising the fundamental frequency and therefore the pitch. Let's take a look at Miss Higgins' vocal folds. Note how as she stretches them out, their tension increases and the pitch rises. Now, the following equation shows how both length and tension are factors that contribute to the pitch of the voice. F naught equals 1 divided by twice the length of the vocal folds multiplied by the square root of longitudinal stress divided by density. In this equation, once again F naught is a fundamental frequency, L is the length of the vocal folds, S is the longitudinal stress or stress in the direction of the tissue fibers, and D is the density of the vocal fold tissue. Keep in mind that this equation is an approximation based on the assumptions that the vocal folds are consistently thin, continuously stressed, and fixed on both ends of the larynx. This equation shows that the pitch of the human voice is in an inverse relationship with the length of the vocal folds, but is directly proportional to the square root of the stress of the vocal folds. Well, folks, that's all the time we have today. Let's review what we've learned. Every person is made unique by the pitch of their voice. But what most people don't know is pitch is affected by multiple variables. The pitch of the human voice is affected by... Wait! <coughs> what the <laughs> It's an earthquake! <laughs> 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 Before, 
Furthermore, the pitch of the human voice is in an inverse relationship with the length of the vocal folds. The shorter the vocal folds are, the higher the pitch of the voice. This explains why women have higher voices than men. Along with that, an individual can change the pitch of their voice by making their vocal folds tenser, which raises the pitch of the voice. This concludes our special field report on the geometry of the vocal fold. This is Rebecca Starr and Erica Gardner signing off for LPP News. Join us next week for the geometry of the rocking chair.